Hi. Hello. So my name is Nicola Terrapont. I'm co-heading the glycogenomic team in Marseille, south of France. And I would like to thank the organizer for offering me the opportunity to present the carbohydrate active enzyme database. Um, as you know, carbohydrates are all over the world, from host pathogen interaction, blood group, paper production, cellulose to biofuels, and of course the nice food that we get uh, here in Japan and elsewhere. These carbohydrates are polymers that are quite complex from many different monomers that are branched, chained, in various ways, uh, as you can see here in the plant cell wall. And to the, for the assembly and, more interestingly, the deconstruction of these carbohydrates, we need enzymes that have to be very specific, and this is the most specific class of enzymes there is in the world. Um, and these enzymes, for example, the glycosyl transferase and all these classes of enzymes are classified in the KZ database since uh, basically 27 years. Um, this is a classification into subfamilies and families that is primarily based on sequence level and that are involving protein domains um, since evolution is not an inventor but a tinkerer. Um, but then, yeah, it looks like, look like PFAM, right? It's sort of um, domain classification. So why doing that, why PFAM and Interpro are doing it? First, because we are interested in only in characterized families only. No domain of a non-function. Only things that have been proved to act on carbohydrates. And also we wanted to make sure that there is no over um, annotation by naming a family from the first characterized member. Well, we know there is a lot of diversity in each family. So we are numbering all families. Um, also, it was important for us to report the function of everything we find in the literature and have a very important surveillance of the literature. Um, and we don't want to transfer any annotation, even at 99% identity. We just want to report what is in the literature. And this is a pretty hard task because we are rarely warned by the people that publish paper, despite being here um, in the scientific community since a long time. And the AC numbers are not present in the papers, and sometimes they are not existing at all. And so this is a long watch that starts a hard task. Um, so that's why we want to have our own, oh, our own database with the most up-to-date data, that is, it's weekly updated, and we want to have expert annotation. Um, will that stay? <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, so that's why we have uh, on our public website something that is very different from all what you're proposing here, that is we have a limited access to the data. Uh, KZ is really um, restraining the annotation and the data that is available. And to be sure that we are the only one to make the annotation as experts of the field. And this is also why I'm here to make things move slightly. So. No, not working. Yeah, thanks. Um, so as you know, new enemy, you know yourself. So there is this nice paper, nice paper I read uh, before coming here about the key challenges for the creation and maintenance of specialist database. Uh, this is a paper that is from 2015. And it's very interesting because they are already mentioning the fact that it's difficult for having any funding for creation. And the fact that we tend to have over annotation, um, we store this over annotation where it could just be generated to have interesting targets and then delete it because it would avoid to have this really big problem that is progress and correction in annotation are very rarely pro retro propagated. And this is a big problem. Of course, you have the problem of the modular nature of proteins and the similarity tools that are local. But there is this nice sentence that will make a lot of sense here. There is a need for an agreement among uh, these specialist protein resources to make that data available and to other resources in some more fairly standard or well-defined format. And I think this is what we are doing here. So about KZ Future, uh, I will skip the recent developments just to mention what uh, is my reason for being in Matsue today. 
is the fact that we have to adapt, as Darwin said. We have to automize the literature alerts and the information extraction as much as possible. We have to search for functional annotation uh, and we have to share, I would rather say, the extracted information we've done from the literature. And we have to rethink the functional ontologies for design and share that with other actors. Thanks. Thank you.